Roll snap. Speed. Shot three, scene six, take two. Okay, end fog. So his um, a little uh, look action. into tips and tricks behind the scenes, how to keep your budget small when you um, when you're shooting something like this. Uh, this in this case a fan film. Try to en employ all your friends and and family if you can. Uh, you're probably going to owe a lot of favors. In this case, most of the people involved were the were spot. friends uh, that I worked with before, or um, just uh, friends in my real life. We're in LA, so a lot of people are filmmakers and actors, and uh, you know the, the writer Shoot! Tom is one of the Shoot! actors and. Mike, uh, who plays okay, the good. guard character, um, it's his it's his place where he lives, where we're shooting. So, try to tie in as many of the locations and people that you know together, and try to utilize your locations. Um, and the same with crew. Keep keep your crew small. Uh, Robert, I think Robert Rodriguez said it best. Um, you may have said it in his book. I don't remember, but. You know, the bigger the crew, the more expensive, the more money gets wasted and the slower everything goes. So keep it small. You can see Bernard in the background there, who plays Freeman, is actually booming right there. Um, can't emphasize how important the boom is. I uh, also used, you know, our own gear to try to keep the cost low. I had a Nikon D7000, uh, which was pretty, which was pretty good. For, for I think it came out for the web. Uh, I just kind of over light everything and and uh, and then you can play around with it a bit more in post. Uh, so so try yeah try to use your equipment. Um, shoot with your own camera if you've got one, and uh, try to try to rehearse. Makes everything move a lot quicker. We did some test rehearsals a couple of days before kind of like pre -vis. tested some lights. Uh, I could, you can save right there too. We sh I shot everything with um, with just regular uh, you know, fluorescent bulbs that you get from Home Depot. Well, some were online because they were bigger, bigger, but still plug into regular uh, outlets and some like cheap stands and things that you know we gathered over the years. Uh, I'm not a DP, so pretty much just winged it uh, and if you're really familiar with your camera and its capabilities you can save a lot of you know you can save a lot of money just planning it a bit I used um, a monitor that you could stop the gamma down on so I could sort of light and then pull down the gamma and see what everything looked like you can just stop down your f-stop or iso or whatever you whatever you're doing but yeah keep the keep the production as small as you can uh, and then and then try to rehearse we used um like a sennheiser shotgun mic to capture the audio into a uh, one of those little portable recorders h n4 i think it is and uh, i got a cheap fog machine from amazon i think it was 30 bucks and some fog juice is pretty key for atmosphere and I had a jib from uh, a while back like a cheap jib which was a few hundred bucks from Amazon uh, but we didn't really get a chance to use it that much because most of the stuff was inside and uh, you see even we have a broken a broken uh, slate but it doesn't really matter uh, if it works or not as long as you can you sync your sound up afterwards and the D7000 records audio, so you can sync waveform to waveform. We got the headpiece from this uh, special effects guy, pretty legendary guy, Steve Wang. He made it as a Halloween mask for his son. So that was a pretty awesome thing to stumble upon. And then our Freeman suit, we um, 
we made that ourselves there's a i'll probably we'll post another video kind of detailing how that was made or a post or whatever but it's basically made of foam and then just painted to look like um you know metal it was quite a laborious task he's swinging the light right there to mimic the there's a lantern that was swinging in one of the shots uh, and and for post uh, I used uh, the master collection you can download a trial of Adobe's master collection and it works for 30 days if you plan your post production really well and you're familiar with the software you can download it post your whole movie and and uh, you know and try it out and not necessarily have to come up with the thousands of dollars that Adobe asks for their software but there's other options out there too but I found well, just for speed uh, the new version of Master Collection or Production uh, Collection is is amazing for for editing um, I did a lot of color correction in post you can see that everything's very bright and that way you can kind of bring it down and play with it after but it, you can't really go the other way there's not very much latitude in the dark for the P7000 the bit rate's pretty low uh, so for the door gag back there you can see it looks like there's a door broken we actually just glued it together some like soundboard we cut we, we cut a piece of soundboard up to look like a door and painted it white and then we got breakaway glass we didn't even buy sheets of breakaway glass were so cheap we just bought like the pre-broken stuff and hot glued it to the door you couldn't really tell that, uh, that there weren't glass panes in there and then uh, actually Mike who's you can see moving lights right there <laughs> Uh, just was out of the shot and threw like a handful of glass up into the shot when the when the monster blasted through the door. Ah! Ah! I also was pulling focus one myself. That saves the need to have somebody pull focus, which can be tricky. But with practice, you can successfully pull focus if you don't go for too shallow the depth of field. Definitely got a lot of stuff from Amazon. Uh, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can get things in a couple of days. But you know, cables and stands and, and things like that can't ignore the fast shipping. And then, so I'm calling to people there on the crew. It's probably somebody that's in the movie or has 10 other jobs and if you don't go too crazy with too much too much stuff and if you don't get too complex you can move pretty quickly we shot I think the script was I want to say 15 pages but it might have been a bit shorter than that we shot that over two nights and then we sh we added a little bit more on the third night there were some scheduling conflicts with some of the actors that couldn't be there so we had to extend it uh, which helped out actually and what I did was was I instead of shooting 16 to 9 I shot at like a 2-3-5 aspect ratio and just cropped uh, and just cropped and you can see I taped the monitor and also taped on the camera as well the, the, the crop lines and I mean it's kind of sacrilegious to lose the resolu resolution but it, in a way it looks more cinematic to me at least because everything's 16 to 9 these days even this video from the iPhone camera 16 to 9 uh, and also it gives you space to reframe in post if, if you're framing slightly off tracking or something like that uh, you have that extra you know room in the frame you can see the jib there with the monitor on it it was kind of tricky to use it it really just kind of slowed things down so it's probably a good job that it really wasn't available that much so um, back to what I was saying before, in, in post you you know you shoot that 
two three five aspect ratio it looks cinematic you can reframe and it, you know and it, and it, 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 it could save you if you're shooting really fast on set and you know and I'm shooting and operating and directing and uh, trying to pull focus at the same time you know maybe you you know you mess up a little bit uh, so it can save you a little bit that way too and since mo you know most of the time the final delivery is on the web or at least you know if that's what you're shooting for then you know it's not really going to hurt you that badly there's some guys that shoot a lot of videos online these guys have the YouTube channels and they're shooting with red or whatever and and you know thinking they're never going to shoot super high resolution 3k or 4k or whatever it shoots and then shooting everything at that resolution for the same reason because then you can you know you can if you need to do a motion track or something in post or you just want to reframe it gives you all this resolution to work with so I can't yeah, I kind of feel the same way if you can it can save you I kind of switch between the monitor and the the monitor on the D7000, I, f I forget why now. I think sometimes it was just not necessary to have it on there. Yeah, it's kind of. I think having a good makeup artist is key too. It's the little things, uh, like you know, smoke for atmosphere. And if your makeup artist is really on the ball, you know they're running around and making everybody look like you know like movie stars they're fixing their makeup or they're putting sweat on or or just touching up or whatever and we had an awesome makeup artist I wish she actually she'd been a friend because um, you know I probably could have done some type of a favor and got her to work for free too but in this case we didn't know anybody so um, she got some meager tiny amount of money which was totally you know totally underpaid what she was worth but yeah she was amazing so so hopefully that gives some insight into you know the types of methods that we use to you know keep the keep the budget small this type of a production thanks for listening